Hey everyone, welcome back to our online study here at Albert Lee Assembly of God. We are doing our current study is through the Battle Buddy, and it's our store, our series on the armor bearer. And so we're so thankful that you're taking time out of your day to uh, join these videos or listen to the the audio. Um, it is very enjoyable for me, and I'm hoping that you get a ton out of this um, as well every week. Um, last week's episode, we we called it an invitation. We looked at the we're transitioning now from more or less looking at the Old Testament passages, and now we're looking at the the, the New Testament implications on armor bearer principles. And, uh, and so I hope that you're enjoying this as we switch to the armor bearer is according to like New Testament um, uh, principles and illustrations. Last week, when we looked at the invitation, we considered how Jesus called uh, Peter and Andrew, James and John, and um, how they were in the midst of doing their responsibilities, and uh, Jesus just called to them. There's that invitation to join them in his endeavor. And what did we saw? We saw that they left their nets immediately and began to follow him. And so that was a really good study, and I hope that, uh, that you had a chance to watch it already. If you haven't, uh, at the end of this video, there will be a playlist, and um, you can... Um, yeah, you can enjoy uh, going and reviewing that um, again. And so I hope it is really, really enjoyable for you. The weather is warming up. And so I'm really excited about that. It was uh, in the, almost the low 90s today. And um, so it's that time to go outside and, and, and enjoy the sun. Uh, time to get those projects going. And uh, so eventually, uh, at some point, I hope to do some recording outside. It will be a little difficult logistically with the, the, the mic here and uh, the camera and the, this overall setup. But I hope to, to do something that's kind of change the, the overall atmosphere um, just so that it's much more fun for everybody who does watch the video portion of these. And uh, it's, so it should be really good. I'm trying to find brainstorm ways to keep um, the online study fresh. And uh, so we'll, we'll, uh, we'll see how we can do that with um, just with the overall busyness and the resources and the time that we have, what we can do to really make the online stuff a little bit more engaging. And so I hope that you enjoy that. Um, but for today, let's grab what is needed. If you need a pen, paper, if you need to keep your hands on the steering wheel of your vehicle or, you know, continue uh, your hands at your task at hand, then, hey, go for it. But grab what you need and let's just get ready to dive right in to our, our study on the Battle Buddy today. And so I hope that that will be really enjoyable for us. Okay. We're still focused on the disciples. We're still focused on Jesus. Um, and we're going to be transitioning in these final, again, these final episodes. Um, don't quote me on this, but we're probably going to have a total of 17 episodes on this. Uh, hopefully, if, if all works out together, um, that we'll have a total of 17 different episodes in regards to the Battle Buddy series and kind of cap off the school year. Um, before we take a few weeks off and break for the summer and, and have a different summer program. And uh, so it should be really good. But we're sitting on the New Testament right now. Now, you know, we looked at the four disciples last week. And so this week we're going to kind of jump ahead. There's now 12 disciples that have been called by Jesus and called and qualified by Jesus to be basically to, to minister to him and to be taught by him. And they, these 12 are walking alongside and they're going with the whole process uh, with Jesus. And they're ministering to him. They're growing with him. And it's just going to be a really, uh, really good that they're being taught by them. Um, I, I'm calling them armor bearers because of their function. And so these armor bearers have been walking beside their master for some time, leaning on him, going to him with concerns and questions. Um, basically, really, I mean, he's leading them directly. And they every time that they have a, a, a misgiving, anytime they have a question or a doubt, they just turn right around and go straight over to him. And they they ask him directly, and uh, which is a wonderful, um, just a wonderful indication of their closeness of that relationship that they've been given and how they can just lean upon him in that way. And uh, so it is. It is really good. You know, it is a wonderful thing to have your your leader, your master right there beside you at all times. Um, the problem with that 
is is that when you have to have that leader beside you at all times helping you walking you through all these things is if, if you need that all the time what's going to happen is it's not going to produce in you the maturity that you need um it's not going to produce that well-rounded maturity um where the armor bearer transitions out of that role and into a, a stronger leadership role, if you will. And so the goal and the purpose of others is, uh, the goal and the purpose is to prepare others um, for doing the work themselves. Um, the armor bearer role, okay? The armor bearer has to grow so that the work multiplies. It's, it, it, they can't be dependent upon the leader anymore um, they must go and do in Christ's name and not wait in a line for one man. I, I call it the kind of like the multiplicity of reach. Um, the multiplicity of reach. You know, one person who's talented, excessively gifted to do something is going to be limited by their physical body, um, their knowledge. Their, they're still going to be limited. But if you take that one person and produce... A, you know, uh, uh, you know, uh, pass on that those talents, pass on that knowledge, pass on those gifts to a multitude of others, and then that multitude of others then goes out and does the work. That one individual has just become, however many times, much more effective in their reach, and that's and that's one of the things that we see exemplified here in the battle buddy with the New Testament. You know, as a as a senior pastor, you know, I, uh, it, it I'm I'm one of those guys that I, I if it doesn't get done, I'll do it. Like that that is me, and it, it, it can be it can be both a positive thing and a very bad negative thing. Um, you know, if if something doesn't get done, I'm gonna be the one who puts my hand to it to make sure it happens. The problem is, is I'm one person. I we haven't perfected cloning yet, and so I'm not a clone. Um, even then, I don't know if I want to have a hundred of me helping me out. I, I might get frustrating. Um, anyways, but the idea is I'm limited. I can't, I can't be in the recording booth at the same time I need to be in the nursery at the same time I've got to be, uh, with the youth or with the kids. You know, I can't, I can't be in the church office counseling and at the same time, identically, uh, chaperoning uh, the teenage boys at camp. I, I can't be in all these different places at the same time. And so in order for me to increase my effectiveness, I have got to train and raise up a team of armor bearers who I can pass my giftings into, my authority and my power into, for them to go and do these other tasks, therefore increasing the ministry's effectiveness. Okay, and that's what Jesus does here in, in this passage. This is the principle that we're going to be shedding light on today in regards to the battle buddy. And so again, we're, we're in the New Testament, right? We're going to look at uh, the book of Luke. So I am in the NIV, uh, NIV study Bible this time. Luke chapter 9, and, and let's read verses 1 through 6, Okay. It says, when Jesus had called the twelve together, he gave them power and authority to drive out all demons and to cure diseases. And he sent them out to proclaim the kingdom of God and to heal the sick. He told them, take nothing for your journey, no staff, no bag, no bread, no money, no extra shirt. Whatever house you enter, stay there until you leave that town. If people do not welcome you, leave their town and shake the dust off your feet as a testimony against them. In verse 6, So they set out and went from village to village, proclaiming the good news and healing people everywhere. This passage, what Jesus does here, is, is another step in preparing his disciples who in that moment are just armor bearers. But Jesus is going to go to the Father soon, and these disciples need to know how to minister. And so he puts them in a position where they have to do that, where they have to minister. And so there's, there's, two, there's two big things that occur with this 
uh, with Jesus teaching his disciples how to fulfill their calling. There's there's two two big occurrences that happen in this moment. Okay, first and foremost, a we see the master equip them for the task. All right, not 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 just in resources, not just in resources, but in authority as well. He says, "I give you all power and authority to do all these works." Okay, so they do that. They go out and they accomplish those things. They go out in that power and that authority, and they, and and it says they went out and they ministered in those towns, which is amazing because in the limited time that Jesus had, he he he, he essentially he's like, let's be effective. So I'm going to send you twelve out, and you're going to go do this work. And he gave them the same power, the same authority to go and do that same bit of ministry, and they did it. Okay, and I, and I love it because what's more, and I think this is amazing, and this is a, a key principle in. Uh, you know, being sent out to grow and to um, being sent out to to be effective and to multiply your reach. He told them what not to take. They were not to take any other resources. No sack lunch, uh, no no suitcase, um, no purse, and uh, and to rely upon whatever else he gave them. And so he he does this. Um, this is funny. Many times we we think that we are supposed to have all all of our certain kind of resources in place, whether that's our wealth, our prestige, uh, etc. It's like we have to have everything lined up before we can do what God called us to do. Um, and, and we think that we think that I've got to have I've got to have my purse stacked to the brim. I got you know I've got to have the right clothing. I've you know, a side joke here. I can, it's really funny. I can always, with a ninety percent success rate, I can tag and be correct when I see a complete stranger if they're in the ministry or not. And it's usually if they're, uh, you know, a, a younger person, like in their forties and under. Um, the way their hair is just uh, coiffed back, the right angle. Um, the attire they wear, their special little jeans, like they're trying to be so hip and, and popular and in the now. Um, and I can, I can peg really class, but it, it's funny that we think we got to have it all put together before we can enter into what God's called us to do. When quite simply, this principle here is I've called you to do it. I've qualified you to do it. Just go and do it. And, uh, and so he does, he, he equips them for the task to go and do this, this work. And, uh, instead of just we just need to go in there and just trust that God's going to take care of the needs. Um, the Lord will give us everything that we need to do the task. Um, we don't have to, to doubt. We don't have to go into this, this if only uh, question here. We don't, we don't need to go through these high, huge if onlys. If only I had this resource, I could do this better. If only, it doesn't matter. Those if onlys should not plague our minds. We just need to trust God that God's going to supply our needs in the moment. First Peter one verse three. Praise be to the God, to God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In His great mercy, He has given us new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, and into an inheritance that can never perish, spoil, or fade. This inheritance is kept in heaven for you who through faith and shielded by God's power unto the coming of salvation that is ready to be revealed in the last time. In all this you greatly rejoice, though now for a little while you may travel with sorrows and griefs of many kinds. Right there. Be thankful for our living hope. This heavens, inheritance is kept in heaven for you through faith and shielded by God's power unto the coming of salvation that is ready to be revealed in the last time. Rejoice now. Though for a little while you may have had to suffer grief of all kinds of trials, these come, verse 7, these come so that you can prove genuineness of your faith of greater worth than gold. See, our obedience is worth more than, than whatever resource we could have. And so we just need to rush, we just need to go into that. Armor bearers for God get supplied by God, whether in an abundance or in a need, he comes through for us. And this applies to how we function on this earth, trusting that those above us will ensure that we get all that we need to accomplish the task. Okay, 
So again, A, we see the master equip them for the task. He gave them all that they needed and told them what not to worry about. B, the second thing, okay, there's two big principles of this, this the text, okay, in, in Luke 9. The second thing that we see is that the master sends them out, and I'm going to ruin you with this. He sends them out without him. Now, okay, you know, he is the son of God. I get that, but I want to explain something here. Christ sent them out into towns without him, okay? Before, if a problem arose when they're ministering, they can turn around and be like, hey, yo, Jesus, come over here. This guy's got a question for you. Okay, now Jesus is not with them, and they've got to be able to have an answer, you know? Hey, this this is going on. Hey, this hey Jesus, this guy needs you over here, and Jesus will. Come. But see, now Jesus is not there. They have to come up now. They have to lean upon upon this. The, there's, they're they're gonna have to come up with something. The master's ability was limited by his physical body while he walked this earth, and so that that limitation upon his body limited his reach. And so, in order for him to send the gospel further. In order for him to have a greater impact, what had to happen is he had to uh, extend himself in other ways. And so what does he do? He equips the disciples and he sends them out. He's not going to go with every single one of them, so he sends them all out and they go and do the task. The best way, again, just to reiterate this, the best way to enlarge our reach is to multiply. It's to multiply. So one man empowers 12 men to do all that he does. So it doesn't mean I need to go and camp, but if I can send someone to camp in my stead, I'm increasing my reach. Uh, you know, I, I I can't be in the nursery, but if I can send someone into the nursery on my behalf, I can extend my reach. And so it's just, it's knowing how to make things happen so you can utilize the best of your time. And so we do, we train people, we get armor bearers, and then we empower these armor bearers to go and do the task. And then we enable them to do the task without us having to be present. Delegation. That's a great word. Delegate. And so, now they had to leave, and they had to go out from his presence and do the work themselves underneath the power of the Holy Spirit. Which is wonderful because it tells us in Acts chapter 1 that uh, when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, Judea, and Samaria, and to the uttermost ends of the earth. Acts 1.8. Um, that's an important thing for us to get in this moment because... Um, Jesus was going to the Father, and so he was going to empower his followers. He's going to empower his disciples to go and do this amazing work. And so what we see here is why it's so important that we go underneath the power of the Holy Spirit to accomplish these things. Again, the goal and of growth and maturity is that what we've received, we pass on to those after us. What I get isn't just for me. Like it does, it sets me free. You know, when, in terms of the gospel, uh, of the, the Bible, what I receive, yes, it is for me, but it's not for me alone. It's for those after me, and so that includes my children and my children's children. You know, your children's children, and so it's for those after us. And so I take it, I grow, I receive it, and then I make sure that it is passed on. It's a training thing. Okay, so I, I'm going to give you a, a, a flow of events, a flow of, uh, of progress, and I want you to see how it works. Okay, so we grow. We go from growing to learning, from learning to maturing. In maturing, we teach. Through teachings, we equip. In equipping, we then send. And then after the sending, we pass. Okay, and then the cycle starts on with the next generation. They have grown, and when we pass it on to them, they were passing on, we're, we're equipping them, they're learning, they're maturing, they're being sent out, they're teaching, they're equipping others, and then they too pass. And it goes on to the next flow of generation. And so again, by teaching and equipping and sending others out into areas that we cannot personally get into effectively, we are increasing our reach through that ability. And that's, that's amazing that we can increase our reach through that ability. Okay. Jesus, and I, and I love this. I want to point out this because we focused on the 12 right there, and this is huge. But Jesus didn't do this just to the 12 disciples. 
Okay. See, I want to see. I want to. I want to see the chosen series do this if they can. Come on, like, let's let's man up. Let's do this next big step, because Jesus did not just send out the twelve disciples. He also did it with the crowds that followed him. In in Luke ten, there's this idea of leadership multiplication. Okay, that that those underneath our influence, those who follow us. All right. That, that, they, that our influence is stronger than just our staff and our volunteers, okay? So let me repeat that. The influence that we can have is greater than our staff and our volunteers, that it actually can go to those around us. And so Jesus has crowds follow him, and he turns to 72 of them, and he sends out those 72 with the same directive as the 12. So I want to jump ahead into Luke 10. So we looked at Luke 9, but now I want to read Luke 10, okay? Because in Luke 10, we, we actually, we see this. In verses 1 and 2, it says, After this, the Lord appointed 72 others and sent them two by two ahead of him to every town and place where he was about to go. He told them, The harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. Ask the Lord of the harvest, therefore, to send out workers into his harvest field. And so that's essentially that's what he does. And he takes these 12, he sends them out. He says, I'm the harvest is going on and, and we need you guys to know this and to go and do this. And so they, he gets them the same, the same display of power that the 12 had, the 72 had. OK, even when it comes to armor bearer success, it, it is it's a tremendous thing when we begin to see the same power and the same display of what God's wonderful work can do in our lives. And we can think, oh, look, I, I grew this great ministry. Okay. These are the 72 here and they, they have this power and they see these great works happening and they can go into uh, a wide range of emotions. But I want you to see the success here of, of where, um, where does that armor bearer success kick in for the 72 and the 12? It's the same standard. Okay. It's not, it's not found in our accomplishments or even in bragging of our great deeds and those accomplishments. It's actually quite simple. See, after the 72 went out, they returned to Jesus. And, and further on in chapter 10, we, we get a little window on what they went through. So looking at verse 17... The 72 returned with joy and said, Lord, even the demons submit to us in your name. He replied, I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. I have given you authority to trample on snakes and scorpions and to overcome all the powers of the enemy. Nothing will harm you. However, do not rejoice that the spirits submit to you but rejoice that your names are written in heaven. <laughs> what, a, what a little sweet reminder for them that uh, even for many of us, we can get so caught up in, I cast out these demons. I do these great works. I do these wonderful things. I have this big ministry. Look at, look at, Lord, look at what we have done. And God says, do not rejoice in that. Rejoice that your names are written in the Lamb's Book of Life. See, the great reward for armor bearers in all that we do, all that we accomplish in the great tasks, the, the, the real reward that we get, the real reward that we get to celebrate in and to rejoice in actually is the fact that our names are written in the Lamb's Book of Life. We, we get life as our reward, and that's what we are to rejoice in, not in these other things that just happen. It doesn't matter. If God wants to give you a big ministry, he'll give you a big ministry. If he wants to keep your ministry small, he will keep your ministry small. God's the one who designs how all that comes together. But what's important for us to recognize is that we get to rejoice that our name has been written in life. And uh, and that's the thing to just celebrate in, you know. Um, we get as armor bearers before the Lord, we get to go and be sent out to accomplish these great things for God. To have these big ministries to... To, to lead churches and to lead youth groups and children and to lead the nurseries and to, to, to have great big multi-site campuses. And we can do these great big things. But do you realize how, how 
the standard res the standard uh, reward that we all get that the same person who has the small will get the same reward as the one who has the large and 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 the beauty of it all is that we we have this this honor of having our names written in the lamb's book of life it, that Jesus records our name as being recipients of life and he goes that's what you rejoice in and so it what i love about that is that as armor bearers it, it, it takes everything that we could try to celebrate on. We've been given his power. We've been given his authority. Whatever area we're in, we you know whatever town, whatever size ministry we have, we, we get to receive this. But it doesn't matter. What matters is that our name, our name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life. And for the guy, we get to rejoice. So I hope that you are rejoicing if you follow the Lord and your name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life, that you rejoice, that you have been given life in Christ Jesus. And in, 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 in majority, and in going into that, uh, you know, we be armor bearers for God, re regardless of however we can serve Him. We do whatever we can with whatever things we've been given for His glory. And, uh, and we do that for His honor. But we rejoice that our names are written in the Lamb's Book of Life. I hope that you enjoyed this study. Um, you know, it is a wonderful thing. If you'd like to give towards the ministry, there's a giving link in the description below or the give option tab in the church app. And uh, that just helps, again, to increase our effectiveness here at the church. Um, also, we would love to have you join us. If you're in the area of Albert Lee, Southern Minnesota, we would love to have you join us in person. We have Sunday mornings at 9 a.m. is the Sunday school, 10 o'clock is worship, and 6 p.m. is our prayer service. Our midweek is Wednesdays at 6.30, and uh, it is a wonderful time of, of gathering as a family. We also uh, live stream our Sunday morning worship at 10 o'clock on YouTube, and it goes on the church app uh, a few days later. Um, our midweek Bible study, of which you are, if you're listening to this, you found out where to go for that. Those are released every Thursday morning at 7. And so I hope that you will connect with us on our church app and on YouTube as well. And thank you so much for being a part of this study and uh, blessings to you. Thank you so much. And we hope that you enjoy the rest of your day. Take care. God bless.